we many times forget to appreciate the design and the engineering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I were to call it in, in those terms. So we, we have a lot of appreciation for different brands, right? Like Apple, the phones, the athletes, you know, the brands like Nike and all these different brands. And we appreciate their product. And when we put in our money, we are waiting for the next model. We're always so trusting the brands. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think we take it a lot for granted. Whether it be starting from our own human bodies, right? So we may be like, yeah, it's 20 megapixel camera from Apple, but you know, we, we forget the blessing of our eyesight. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the next episode of Quranic Transformation. Let's get started. So verse number three from Surah Al-Mulk. الذي خلق سبع سماوات طباقا ما ترى في خلق الرحمن من تفاوت فارجع البصر هل ترى من فطور He is the one who created seven heavens one above the other you will never see any imperfection in the creation of the most compassionate so look again do you see any flaws All right, so starting again with what does this verse tells me about my Lord, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the kind of things I'm picking up is that uh, obviously it says Allah is one and he is our creator. And not only is our creator, but he's actually perfect in his creation. And also uh, he's compassionate. Great, fantastic. And I think this is something that we uh, definitely need to reflect more on. Uh, we many times forget to appreciate, you know, the design and the engineering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if I were to call it in, in those terms. So we, we have a lot of appreciation for different brands, right? Like Apple, the phones, you know, the, the athletes, you know, the brands like Nike and all these different brands. And we appreciate their product. And when we, you know, put in our money, we are waiting for the next model. We're always so trusting the brands. But when it comes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I think we, we take it all out all for granted. Whether it be starting from our own human bodies, right? So we may be like, yeah, it's 20 megapixel camera from Apple, but you know, we, we forget the blessing of our eyesight and the blessing of our hearing, the blessing of facial recognition that we have, right? Or when we go out outdoors and we look at the mountains, like just like huge mountains, right? And uh, I think there was a video that's done and I encourage people to take a look at it. And it gives you, uh, I think the depth and heights of different creation. So it compares the depth of ocean with, let's say, Burj Khalifa, right? So it, it kind of does this on a scale and it shows you that, okay, well, this is the tallest building, but this is the height in this ocean or, or the depth in this ocean, right? Or the height of this mountain. And you see that, you know, going on that scale uh, as it shows you taller and taller buildings and it shows you, you know, deeper and deeper oceans and the taller and taller mountains uh, as an example. So appreciating the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and not taking it for granted will help us appreciate the power, the design, the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points our attention to in this verse. Uh, anything that comes to you like from a design perspective or, or what do, or anything that you've seen recently outdoors that was like really amazing to you, Muhammad? I think what's amazing is when I look at all the innovations that human beings are doing, um, they're all based on the creation of Allah. Right? So even like I'm looking at this camera, the way this camera works is actually the same as my eye works. It focuses close, it focuses far. So all the creation uh, that, that man does, it's actually all based on the creation of Allah and it's all inspired through that creation. Fantastic. And, and I think that's, that's another very important point, that the, the point that you mentioned of inspiration, right? Because sometimes we may, what, even what is attributed to a man's innovation, the idea and the inspiration is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? Exactly. Because yeah. Otherwise, I would go to Walmart and buy a couple of them as well, right? And build yeah. a few things too. Yeah. And, and this is, and, and the reason to think about it, you know, yesterday I was eating sweet corn, right? And you know, sweet corn, when it comes, it's actually wrapped up, right? Mm -hmm. I was thinking, imagine the first human being that actually unwrapped this and thought, okay, if I boil this thing, I can actually eat the sweet corn, right? And I think this is knowledge that Allah gave. And there's no other way for us as human beings to realize, okay, sweet corn is edible, you know? So it's just, it's just amazing uh, the knowledge that Allah has given us. Fantastic. And another angle to that as well is like, if you look at the history of a lot of experiments, a lot of discoveries were, were by accident. 
So they were trying to do something yes. else. They yeah. leave that. You, if you come in after a few days, oh, you, see, you observe something, and then kind of the, yeah. <laughs> the the neurons click and fire, and then you're like, oh, okay, what about this? What about that? So the, yeah. you actually see that it's all from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Even the, the what's uh, you know what you can term as human innovation. Yeah. Very nice. And I, I know you mentioned here that you know a lot and again reminds you of the mercy of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Right. And this is, again, in the last episode, we also saw the, the concept of being forgiving. And here, again, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds you uh, of the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, you know, it continues about talking about reflection. So, so this is what we would take away from this, is to essentially uh, focus on that. And the next verse is we will also uh, read, recite again. However, it's, again, uh, encouraging you to focus and admire and appreciate uh, the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Um, ثم ارجع البصر كرتين ينقلب اليك البصر خاسئا وهو حسير then look again and again your sight will return frustrated and weary yeah this is very interesting bro. like something i've just like looking at this now what i've realized is that not only did allah create us but he knows us very well like he's saying if you do this this is going to happen to you Right? This is going to happen to your sight. Because he created us, he knows us so well. Yeah, and I think that from even from uh, you know, other elements that we talk about is, is what we consume, right? So any sort of these physical senses that we have, whether it be the seeing or the hearing, it's really important like how do, how do we consume it? Because they are doors into your mind and they affect how you think and how, you know, how, how you function. So in general, people may be more careful about what they eat because they then feel that it's actually going inside my body and it's going to be part of me and they will be more careful about it. But similarly, the ideas, the contents, the thoughts that we actually consume from our eyes or ears, uh, they are also really, very important to keep an eye on. Yeah. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually draws our attention to some other details. right? And this is about, um, as we see here, um, the next verse, وَلَقَدْ زَيَّنَّ السَّمَاءَ الدُّنْيَا بِمَصَابِيحَ وَجَعَلْنَاهَا رُجُومًا لِلشَّيَاطِينَ وَأَعْتَدْنَا لَهُمْ عَذَابَ السَّعِيرِ And indeed, we adorned the lowest heaven with stars like lamps and made them as missiles for stoning eavesdropping devils for whom we have also prepared the torment of the blades. Okay, so this is, again, I think it has a, a few dimensions that we can talk about here. Uh, starting with the sky stars and, and the sky. I, I haven't done any uh, observation on that, to be honest. Uh, I mean, I've read some data, but is there anything that kind of comes to you when you talk about or think about a galaxy or any of your own experiences around that? I think, like, we, a lot of us, we live in cities. We don't get to see the sky much. But when you go out to somewhere like a desert or somewhere where there's no light pollution and you look up at the stars, it it's awe-inspiring like you you realize the power of a lot and i've heard a lot of things about you know like there's more stars in the sky than there are grains of sand on the earth and all this kind of stuff no, right no. it's it's just it's just a, a next level of uh, inspiration when you look up and you realize what's there and i think one of the greatest things about these kind of verses is that they they're giving us uh, an insight into why allah created certain things what the purpose is of certain things. And so it makes us understand uh, our world much better and how we fit into it. Fantastic. I think this, and then the next part of it kind of also reminds you of something, again, which this is pointing to. And, uh, you know, people who are interested in, we encourage you. So we are on Quran.com right now. You can just click on it and it will take you to Tafsir ibn Kathir where you can get more details about the words. And there's a, there's a mention here about basically repelling and striking uh, the shayateen. Right. So we know from the hadith that there are, you know, uh, shayateen that actually try to eavesdrop on the conversations that are happening up in the heavens uh, between the angels or to the angels and whatnot. And that's the whole chain of them being connected to soothsayers and, uh, you know, all these fortune tellers and whatnot. However, this is something that is really serious in, in the religion. And, you know, I, I, I used to think that, you know, nobody would really be doing it these days. But recently I came across some celebrity interviews like of Muslims. And, and they were talking about astrology and, you know, stars and, you know, what star you are in. And I'm like, really? Like, I, I, you know, <laughs> I really thought that this is probably we're done with. But I was surprised mm -hmm. to see that a lot of people are still, like, involved in that. And this could be really dangerous and uh, against your and, you know, leading into shirk and whatnot. So something to be really careful about. Not just this thing, 
I think anytime you try to do some of these type of things, especially that relates to Aqidah and matters of the unseen, uh, don't just go with, oh, I think that should be fine, or this is fun, or this is helpful. Uh, or, you know what, I was watching this celebrity and he mentioned this or she mentioned this, so it should be fine. No, actually seek knowledge and make sure you know what you're doing there. Sometimes it's curiosity kill the cat, right? Like you're yeah. just <laughs> curious about things, you start delving into it and then before you know it, you're kind of in haram or shirk or something like that. So it's very, very important that we're careful with these things. Fantastic. And yeah, I think just to wrap up, uh, you know, and the last thing is we talked about the mercy and the forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But from the perfection of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that he also has the element of punishment, right? He is able to and he does establish justice. And that's what he's reminding us that, look, there is a painful punishment and torment that has been prepared for those who choose that path. And, you know, we need both, right? We need attraction, we need motivation, but we also run away from unpleasant things. So it's important to have that uh, balance of, you know, fear and hope uh, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So I think we'll wrap it up with this and we'll see you in the next one.